Hi, everybody. Um, I'd like to um, start the um, special commission meeting for Monday, June 12th. This is a hybrid meeting. There are some um, numbers online and some in the great plain room at Town Hall. Um, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the um, the May minutes, the May 15, 2023 minutes. Does anybody have any comments or changes on those? Yep. So motion to open oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> motion to, to approve. I Okay. Who made the motion? <laughs> the I Great, thank you. Okay, um, local historic update. So wait, so it's four zero. Four zero. Three. Yes. Okay. Okay, so. John, um, other than knowing that the first meeting for the local historic district committee is on June 29th, do you have any other updates on this? I don't have any. Gloria or Miles, do you have anything on it? No. no well, just, just what I passed along. Yeah, yeah there's a full committee sure. and we're meeting for the first time on June 29th. Oh, that's right, Gloria, you're on the committee as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I should show you, I went around my neighborhood with my phone and I took a video of house, tear down house. It's literally every other, it's just amazing. And I'm sure it's like that in other neighborhoods. One that just went down today on the register. Oh yeah, I passed that. Yeah. And there's one at, on Boyden Street. Um, I can't remember the number. It's, it has a placard on the house. It's been completely gutted, but the house is the house is there. The windows are gone. Everything else is there. And I thought, would currently, we, yes. I thought, would we have to see that? I'm not sure of what, where the construction has to, where the line is drawn between what needs to go to the building department and what the building department would pass to us. Do you? Does anybody um, have any? Um, yeah, I passed that most recently too. Do you know what I'm talking about? The yellow house? I, I don't think it's the same one, but it's down and it's just the the structural, it's not even the shaded. yellow Victoria. Yeah, right. you're the corner? Yeah. <gasps> Is that so I'm not I, I'm um, not sure like in the um when it talks about you know what you what need what the building department needs to share with us, what to what where is that line drawn? I think if they're not touching the exterior, there is no line. I mean, I think it's not it's not external demolition. No, it's not. You know, it's one the thing whole thing's there. One thing we have, you know, said time and again is we don't interfere with internal renovations. Of course. Um, the other thing is um, has Dave Roach retired as of today, or is it the end of the month? No, Dave Roach retires at the end of the month. His okay. retirement ceremony, which is open to the public, is on June. I'm on the record. <laughs> <laughs> it is at the end of the month. Okay, no, I think that's just what it would be you know, for this purpose, which is I'm wondering if. It's yeah. going to be Thursday, June 29th from 4 to 6 p.m. here in Powers Hall and yeah. again open to the public. And I'm sure um, he'd appreciate if this body or the members. Yeah. Yeah. What was that date? I'm sorry, Miles. June 29th, 4 to 6 p.m. We'll slip in before the yeah. other yeah. senior day. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a little partying first, then go into, into our meeting. Should I give you my photos to share with mm -hmm. them? No, just kidding. Um, but I'm that curious, you know, things we're going to have to be a little vigilant that things don't fall through the cracks. Right. So do we have a replacement for Dave? Yes. Um, I don't have the name on hand, but the town has hired um, the new building commissioner who will um, be joining us upon Dave's retirement. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, should we? We should meet him. I'm guessing or something? I'm happy to facilitate having the new building commissioner uh, come to one of the commission's meetings if you... So yeah, that would be great. Sorry, this 
probably falls under new business, right? I don't really know what this is. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, um, the Hillcrest update, just, a, just a something of interest to us. Um, did, there was supposed to be a planning board meeting on the 6th about that. Did anybody see that or know what went down with that? Okay. Okay. I should have looked. Um, for some reason, I thought there was something that was going to be on the agenda at the select board tomorrow night related to that, but there isn't. I checked the agenda. Um, I'm not sure about that, but we can all go back and look. And, and yeah, on um, YouTube. My guess is it's going to continue for several more months. Okay. Because I think that was a significant change. The current plan is interested in the oh, board. Right? I think it, I think so. Okay. It's hard to tell because I haven't. You know, it's been a while since the plan was published. And then I just saw the most recent one. It was significantly different. Mm -hmm. Depending on how significant the change it is, if if it pushes it into the code updates, because we're right on the cusp of um, I think from the end of July, in order to not fall into the new stretch code, that they aren't if they weren't anywhere near getting their permit, they may have gotten pushed out because they now have to comply with the new stretch code. Okay. Okay. Um, but they also have to uh, go to town meeting for them. So, and does this is this project affected by the um, MBTA? That's what it's guiding. Piggy banking, piggy banking on the MBTA, yeah. which is why, um, as far as I know, there is a fair amount of planning work because it is it is proposed. That, that's that's I think a big part of what the change. Yeah, you know, I don't know what the intermediate steps were originally. It was essentially, I think, mostly in retail with a couple of apartments, mm -hmm. sort of you know, sort of across the front of that property. And now it's a much larger structure taking up sort of the whole of the property with eight condos or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition to the retail, I wonder if that's why it's a large height and and the and the um paperwork you know does does reference the um the transit oriented. Growth. I wonder if that's why they're interesting. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some towns that never submitted plans on time. I'm not sure I think it's going to go for them. Um, okay, the next thing we have is the loss need and presentation um, the slide deck. That's just so we're going to have to look at our priorities, obviously, next year. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a um, that's a big, a big thing I think to do. So um, you know, we've got that, and we've got the Heritage Three project, which is also another big thing. So um, the, that's basically in aid of um, the Heritage Three project that was originally conceived as being a sort of. Export. Sales, yeah, sort of a sales pitch okay. um, to to um, you know talk to town meeting to talk to historic homeowners about um, inclusion on the inventory. Though I think it will also come into play, you know, now as we talk about potential changes to the to the demo bylaw. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, it's it's a pitch for the benefits of the municipal and, and cultural benefits preservation. Okay, so so that's another. So we've got we've got that in general, the Heritage Street project, which we know that um, there the town has funds set aside for that. But if we change, um, we have to change our consultant and we get one of these um, consultants to take on this job. We need to request that the funds come back to CPC, my understanding, and then make a new request to CPC. Wait, say that again. So the money that we have left, the $15,000 or so yeah. that we have left, um, when we got the allocation from CPC in 2013, 
for the project? <laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> that money's been sitting there for, for 10 years, right? Yeah. So we can't just go take that money now. My understanding is because we're changing um, consultants that we have to get put the money back into CPC, give it back to them, and apply for a new application with our new consultant with the new cost. That's my understanding. I could I could be wrong about that. I thought they said that if we were essentially going to slot somebody into the existing project, we were wondering if we maybe would change. Well, that would be much better. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to look back and look at what he said. Okay, I may be wrong on that. So um, definitely changes would have to be to see. I thought my understanding was what Gloria just summarized was that if we could do it within the budget that we currently have, then we could just use the funds. But if we needed more money or if there was a change that we needed. Yeah. 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 So and that may be so what I'm remembering is that we were, there's no way it's going to cost the same now as it did in 2010. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, but I think it was, you know, if we just get another consultant and say this is how far we got, finish it. Right. We're okay, but if we make any, you know, if we, if we adjust the program, you know, then we're looking at. Yeah. <clears throat> so how can we move forward on this? Um, uh, Leah, did, have you had an opportunity to look at the consultants list? I haven't made any progress on it because it just got distributed within the past couple days, but my hope okay. was to start um, now that I have that list and the addition from Gloria, my hope is to at least start reaching out during our hiatus so that I could you know, share with the group as I, I get information, or at least when we reconvene in the fall, I could have some something to report. Yeah, so maybe if it's possible to scope the project, maybe we select three you know, based on whatever criteria you might have, Leah, and um, and get bids because we really don't have any idea of how much it's going to cost. So we could get comparative um, bidding. Okay, at least some estimates at the very yeah. least. Are we in the ballpark or do we need another yeah. ballpark? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Do we need to expand the stadium in some way? But yeah, yeah if we can get, if we can scope the project, tell them, what has to be done, I'm sure they can give us some idea of what it's going to cost. Yeah, and we have we would, have the contract. We do, I think you And we have it. the comments, you know, I did a, an update on the contract. Yeah, and I think, you know, to go to the consultants with that and say, okay, this is what we have, you know, can you do it? Do you recommend, you know, would you recommend pursuing it this way? Would you recommend make, making changes? You know, basically this is this is what we've got. Um, you know, what's what's your what's your take on that? Are you willing to take over this contract? And um, if you did, I'm going to send you that contract later. Just in case. Um, yeah, I think they do, but sending it again. Do I to send you the consultant thing at the same time? Would that be helpful? Um, sure. Or if you want to just put it all together, why not? Yeah, Don. Um, Don pointed out that this fairly. It's an addition now has a yeah now has consultancy. I I added that to was or sent it out. Um, he immediately rose to the top of my list. Um, possibly because you know I don't know most of these others. I have we have worked with him um, before quite successfully when he was working. He had uh, Jen Darby's job at the um, Mass Historical Commission oh, wow. before Jen did. I want to see if I save the most updated list. And probably was the person we worked with, you know, when we did the initial um, project plan. Expanded the out here it is. Yeah, it's down the bottom. And uh, what's that? All right, so I will uh, email those um, to Leah. Um, save this. Well, yeah, I am around this summer, so if you have questions. I am too. So if it gets to be like a lot, and you know, you're kind of getting busy with other things, can you just let us know, okay? I will. And we'll, um, we'll, we're all here to help you, I'm sure. Um,
Do you want me to email Dave Davidson and just double check with him? Yeah. Okay, so I eat the next agenda item is the housing working group. I made an inquiry about change in the bylaws relating to the teardown activity because their focus, one of their um, areas of focus is affordable housing. It's not, not all they're working on. And obviously by taking down the most affordable homes in the town, we're losing that stock. They're being replaced by, you know, they're taking down million dollar homes, which I know doesn't really sound affordable, but I'm replacing them with $2.6 million homes, which is right. even less affordable, right? So to me, that ties in with their goal. And mm -hmm. so I emailed Natasha Espada, who I think was the chair. The group's not working anymore, but I believe was she the chair, my I feel like she was. Uh, the planning board? Of the working housing group. Ooh, housing working group. Um, I'm in for I can check that. That's okay. I think it was, you know, Natasha. So she's a planning board. Um, I emailed and said, you know, we have a, we have some input in this um, that could be related to the bylaws for demo delays. And she said it's something to work with the planning board on. Um, but then this was right before town meeting, so obviously I wasn't going to bother her with, with that at the time. Um, but that's something. I don't know. Is it appropriate to reach out to her in the summer for that? I don't know what her. You know. I'm, you're more than welcome to reach out to you. And Okay. Members, I know she's upstairs right now at a new RE meeting. Okay. So she is around, basically, okay. so, to town hall. <laughs> so, Don, I mean, that's another big initiative. I, I'm not sure, you know, who you want to handle that. Um, well, you can, since you've made contact with her, you can go right ahead and see it through. And, Laura, I just, Want to apologize? Um, oh, sure. Just went out of slight order. We've been recording since the beginning, um, but it appears we've been in a practice mode um, oh. for for some time. I, I think. So and so, I mean? think I think um, we did have one attendee who unfortunately was missing that first part of that, and that was an administrative error on my part for the last eighteen minutes. We were recording, but okay. um, well, I, I did the wrong setup at the beginning. So I just want to apologize to the attendees who are watching. Sure. Um, that that's on me. Obviously, the full recording will be available yeah. on YouTube as of Friday. Yeah. Um, obviously, the doors are open here in Town Hall. It's an open meeting. Um, and obviously, the minutes will be released, and I assume adopted at a later meeting. No worries. Okay. Thank so, you. So, and apologies. Uh, Joe, for has, Joe has joined the meeting. Yes. Hi, Joe. Hi. I finally figured it out. I said, sent you guys an email. It's about the, um, I was going through the town's website, and it wouldn't let me in. Because I was, a, it says if you're joining as a panelist, use the email, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't. So I found like an old, old one and logged in. Yeah, yes. we had some technical difficulties actually. So yeah. you're, we have, our apologies. And and no I'm sure just uh, a recommendation might be to just briefly recap um, some of the prior discussions, sure. just for those who are just able to uh, join at this yeah, point. Do that. So who do we have on now? Um, we have two attendees. We um, have uh, Joe and Joe and Ross. Okay, great. Well, Matt. Yeah, Matt and Ross, excuse me. Yeah. That's a helpful. Okay. Okay, great. So what we started with was um, um, we, we approved the minutes. We had a quorum, so we were able to do that. Um, I, you saw them, I think, Gloria. Did you send them out, Gloria? Or did I send them out? One of them sent them out. One of them, one of them, one of them sent them out. Um, did, I don't know if you had any comments though, Joe, uh, on the minutes or if you got them. I, I did not. You didn't get them? No, I, I did not have a comment. I didn't have any okay. comments on them. Okay, great. Um, then we talked about the local historic district update and we just, we know there's a meeting on June 29th and there's no other information really on that right now. Um, we mentioned that the current building commissioner is retiring and they have a the town has a replacement for him. And there's a reception on June 29th at six o'clock for four o'clock. Four o'clock, sorry, for Dave Roach. Um, and Miles encouraged um, us to attend, you know, because we've worked with him, some of us longer than others. Uh, and Miles is going to help us set up a meeting with a new person probably in the fall. Um, 
We then talked about the Hillcrest project. Um, that's ongoing. It appears that they've expanded the scope um, of the project. And so we're not sure it could be due to the MBTA initiative, um, you know, that the governor um, launched about a year ago, asking towns and cities to create more housing near MBTA locations. We're not really sure what's happening, but um, we just kind of check in on that with the planning board now and then. Um, it's not really something we opine on. It's just out of curiosity. Somebody's red hand is raised. Joe, is your name that was, raised? That, that, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I got this. I don't know if everyone in town got this letter or if I just got it because I'm um, I I am I live in the in the general vicinity of Hillcrest, but there is a Zoom meeting to on the 14th, which is in two days at 7 p.m. Um, that Dorenzo is, is hosting to, to go through their um, their current development as it stands. I don't know if everyone, anyone's seen that letter. No. So is it from I'm, the I'm, town or is it their own private uh, meeting? No, it's um, it's from Dorenzo Properties. I mean, I'm happy to scan it and send it to the group if, if that's um, appropriate. Um, it just kind of goes through, know. it goes through the... Uh, you know, what they're what they're proposing it's uh 26 units um so wow. that's yeah underground parking um multi-family um uh, one unit you know they have a plan to mix one two and three bedroom apartments homes retail space and underground parking hmm. and they're appealing to needham seniors uh young younger residents who live in needham can afford it and the third group is people uh that work uh in and around downtown needham in hospital employees. So Miles, how does that, that is, work? Oh, sorry, Joe. Go ahead. Yeah, that's, uh, go ahead. Um, so Joe can scan that out here. And since this was discussed and referenced, we can include it as an attachment to the minute, meeting minutes that will be adopted at the next meeting. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Yep. That's really helpful. I'll send, I'll send that out uh, shortly after the, after our meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next thing we talked about was what was sort of combined. Number three on the agenda is the Hill Trust up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Number four was lofting and presentation. Um, that was, as Gloria referenced, that really was sort of a sales pitch for um, the Heritage 3 project, which is identifying more properties to be listed on the inventory. Um, and so we are um, going to check with um, the town treasurer. Is that his title? Dave Davidson? The, uh, the assistant town manager and director of finance. Okay, sorry. Um, because we in 2011 or 12, we're not sure, funds were allocated by CPC, which is Community Preservation Committee. I don't know if you're familiar with, with that committee, but I'm actually on that committee as well. They, that's, that's, I got there via this committee. Um, wonderful news. And the, um, uh, the, the committee allocates funds for certain buckets. Um, such as housing, open space, recreation, historical initiatives and such. Um, they, applicants make their requests for the funds and if it gets approved at town meeting, then you know there's an allocation. So the historical commission at one point asked the CPC for funds to, um, to work on this Heritage 3 project, got the funds and then it was hard to get it going and now we're trying to get that revitalize that a little bit and we just we have a list of consultants and we want to you know start vetting them um, we want to see what the sort of the updated scope of the project would be and whether we need more money and what will happen uh, there so that the last need and presentation slide deck and the heritage three projects sort of dovetail together um, we then, I think we were on, were we on the um, housing working group issue? I think we just finished it. 
I mean, okay. I don't know if there's more to say. So, um, and Leah um, is going to work on checking out those consultants, and we offered to help um, her, of course. I think there's about 11 of them. And so um, I then um, reached out, we discussed this last meeting, to the housing working group, whose work is complete, but they have a plan in place. And they have a lot of goals for housing. And one of the big ones is affordable housing, because as we know, um, we're seeing all these smaller homes being torn down, being replaced by very large homes. And I thought they would that would be of interest to them. Um, and so I reached out to the person who I think ran that group. She thought that we should really get some time with the planning board if we could, because that was the board that sort of, I would say, sponsored or worked with this housing group. Yeah. And so I am going to follow up um, further on that to make sure that we um, we can keep that discussion going. So that's in terms of initiatives, we've got the Heritage 3 project and we've got the um, potential discussion of bylaw changes to the demo delay bylaw to make it a little tougher for homes to be torn down so quickly. So that's another big initiative. And then we have the local historic district committee, which is another initiative. So this, those are three big things um, for next year. Um, and we're, we're all going to have to help to get them done. And let, you know, and obviously when we talk further about succession planning, we'll figure out, um, you know, we'll, we'll fine tune how those are prioritized. So that's kind of the update of where we were. Um, so now we're on, unless anyone has any comments or questions, we are on the discussion of officers for 2023 and 24. So Don, can you explain how the rotation works in the succession with the group? Well, we, uh, we approved the succession plan. Um, Gloria, I'm not sure exactly when that was, or Laura, if you can recall uh, it. Years ago, yeah, it was on a, yeah, a rotating basis. Uh, prior, yeah, prior to that, the chairs stayed in position for a pretty long time. Uh, I think it was sort of um, necess it was out of necessity. I think that um, no one else wanted to do it, so that's why the chair pretty much stayed there. So we established a plan of succession, um, and currently, um, Laura as the chair, um, you then go to the back of the line, so to speak. We have, I would advance to become chair. Uh, Gloria would advance from secretary to um, vice chair. And then either Leah or Joe um, would advance to secretary for the next uh, fiscal year. So I'm not sure about what else you were looking for, Laura, but that's sort of the story. Yeah, and I apologize uh, to Leah and Joe for sending this out to you so late. And kind of springing it on you, <laughs> but my email decided that my it would not authenticate. It turns out that it invalidated my password, and it took me quite a while to figure that out. Um, so by the time I got it back, it was kind of mid afternoon. Um, do either of you have any particular thoughts about becoming the secretary next year? Do you want to take this over to take it? Can I also just add that we do have at least five um, new, five applicants to replace Rose's vacancy, and that those people are being interviewed within the next three weeks or so, two to three weeks. So we will have, I'm confident we'll have a vacancy, we'll have a spot filled there. But you don't want to take someone brand, brand new and give them a job right away is my feeling. I don't know how- but That's not really part of the succession plan would be based on, um, on the seniority as we move through. Right. So perhaps the person who, excuse me, perhaps the person that um, would be coming in could either go ahead of you or after you, Laura, but it would be either be Leah or Joe for secretary. I understand. I, understand. Yeah, I, mean, I was never probably... suggesting. And my point was that there are other people coming and they would not be at being brand new, a candidate for that role. 
I mean, my best case scenario is, you know, next year the secretary is either Leah or Joe, and the year after that it's either Leah or Joe. Um, by then, the new person will have had, you know, enough enough time or been on the board for two years, and you know, will have enough experience to move into the succession. Yeah, understood. So I mean, unless Leah has any objections, um, I, I I could I could certainly take take on that role for next fiscal year. Wonderful, and I support that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Yep. Here, <laughs> do we? So as Joe moves to vice chair, you <laughs> I'm more okay with with that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thanks so much. No worries. Do we do a vote? Yes, we do. So move that officers for the 2003-2004 um, committee year uh, be Don Lankowitz as chair, Gloria Grice as vice chair, and Joe Morrell as secretary. Um, that, uh, I just made a motion. Okay. Those in favor? You need, you need a, a second. second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yay. Thanks, Joe. That's great. Five to zero. One. Basically, one day a month of intensive. <laughs> Unless you put it off. Yeah, that's and then it's but you always on intensive work and speak of feeling guilty. Do you, <laughs> you have but the recordings are helpful, right? I mean yeah. Yeah, the recordings are helpful. Um what I've actually found most useful um is you know on Zoom, when we're on Zoom, I just put the agenda up. As a document, and I type the notes under each agenda item, and then I can go clean them up later. But then I have, you know, I have the immediate, you know, I know who said what, and I have all the immediate um, information. And then occasionally, you know, obviously, if there's something that's not clear, or there's something you want to double check, or you're not certain, um, you would send it to me and Don as a draft, and we take a quick look, and. Um, you know, then you would, uh, we clear it up. Prior to submitting it the, to the commission for approval at the next meeting. Sounds good. Um, your hand's still up, Joe. It was out from before. Oh. Uh, it was. I, I'm, uh, I apologize. I have to hand again to take it down. There we go. There we go. I just want to make sure you don't have anything else. Yep. Um, so then we have proposed meeting dates, and I think Don put out a list of dates. Um, yeah. for consideration. Let's see. Um, under miles. So the calendar. Yes. So I've got. Um, I it's normally we, we meet on um, the third Monday, but nearly every third Monday it's a holiday this year. Um, so a lot of these are second Mondays, and it turns out you know the spacing turned out to be pretty consistent. So um, none of them appear to have conflicts. When's, when's October town meeting? When else is that? October town meeting is on the 30th. Well, the proposed date for the special town meeting is the likely date for the special town meeting is the 30th. I don't want to miss October or, or September. October. Okay, so we're not going to run into that. I just want to make sure we're not. That is still know. not official. The moderator still has not called that, but no. from what I'm hearing. I just want to make sure we're, we can always, you know, adjust if we need to. But um, I did run through these at one point. I didn't see any calendar conflicts 
um, in the regular schedules. Um, does anyone have kids in school anymore? Yes, I, I, I do. Yep. Okay, I didn't check when the April um, and February vacations are. We went over that. Yep. Yeah. Do you do you need to know when they are? Um. <clears throat> I can take a quick look on that. Just, that that's usually the only other thing. Second, um, fourth, fourth Mondays. Uh, it's mostly second Mondays now. Second Mondays. Um, for most of the calendar. Oh, February. Uh, February. February is always President's Week. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why it's actually um, so the proposed date is February 12th. Yeah. I think it's usually the week after that. Yes, February. Yes, President's Day is the 19th. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's why and we. That's why um, most of them are the second week rather than the third. Uh, November, December to get away from the holiday weeks. February to get away from uh, pre uh, President's Day. October to get away from Columbus Day, November to get away from Veterans Day. It's just, you know, there's um, a bunch of Monday holidays that we, that we sort of ran into this year. So for the most part, it's the second week rather than the third week. So I need a school calendar here. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at that. It all looks pretty good. The April breaks the 15th week in okay. February. Don, would you be able good. to send that my way as well? I can forward it to I have it right here. Okay, so those those dates. Do we need mean? alternate dates? You know, last year I gave alternate dates, but I don't know if we want to worry about that. We, yeah, I don't think we really need them at this point. If we do, then we can discuss it at that time. Yeah, I think we'll do it. You want to need to, because otherwise, then you keep two dates. You know, two dates in every month has to stay. Does anybody um does look good for you? Does it look good for you? Oh no, it's, it's I mean fine. there's nothing obvious popping up at this point. At this point it's all good or all bad. <laughs> <laughs> No way to play it right now. Yeah. It all looks fine. Um, there, there's gonna, they'll still be on Mondays, correct? Oh, for sure, Miles. No question about that. These are Monday. Our meetings are always Mondays. So your meetings are whenever you would like to hold your meetings. Okay. Um, That's fine. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Okay. Totally. No. If it's yes. working for you. I agree. I just wanted it's to be like sure there was no. Yep. Yeah, it's not municipal meeting night. The most. Mm -hmm. How do people feel about, and we'll have to check in again, I mean, hybrid versus Zoom. I know some people still feel, uh, the option I think is great, but that's up to you, I guess, you guys, Gloria and John, but I think sometimes having them in person is good, but, you know, it's not going to be my call. That's just something to think about, because I know Miles has to reserve a room and whatnot, you know, um, and be here. <laughs> Don will talk about it this week. I'm sorry. Uh, do you have any any preferences to live versus Zoom? Um, I think we should keep it open to make sure that we have all um, avenues to get a quorum. I mean, in some cases where we might not. I mean, we can encourage everyone to attend live, but um, it also makes it uh, the meeting available to the public a little easier this way. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's yeah. better because if you have something going on, like you can't just get physically there, but you could log on. I think it's helpful. You might get more people. And, and from a town perspective, if I'm going to be here anyways for an in-person meeting, we've also been moving towards making most of them hybrid if able, so they okay. can be recorded as well. Yeah. It's just a matter of transparency. Okay. Yeah. And sort of the best practice of staffing lines. We show up, you know, whether our preference is to show up. Live. I think um, there is some guidance about that though the chair has to okay so, someone's lack of presence physically so right now the select board has a policy governing hybrid meetings however that's superseded by the governor's um or by by mass general all the acts of 2023 which allow um this meeting to be held entirely virtually um 
or in person, but gives the option. Once that expires, should it not be extended? Um, this, there is a select board policy governing hybrid meetings okay. um, where members who are remote would need to be done, that would need to be on the approval of the chair and for exceptional circumstances, the, the full policy um, lists all of those. Okay. But we're not there now. No. But uh, <clears throat> the Mass General Law allows us through. March 31st of 2025. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So we have options for a while. And, you know, I think. Honestly, Don, November, December, January, January, December, January, February. Yeah. 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 I think we need to keep that option open. That's for sure. I just want to do those from home. Yeah. Um, do yeah. we need a motion for the dates to list them in the in the um, minutes? Yeah, I think so. Do I make a motion? Yeah, I'd um, move that the um, meetings for the upcoming fiscal year 23-24 for the historical commission are as and want to record those what you have there um gloria you have september 11th october 16th november 13th december 11th january 8th february 12th march 11th april 8th may 13th and june 10th uh, so uh second So moved. Vote. Aye. 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 Okay, five to zero, one to one. Um, when do you, when do you need to know when else so we can start, uh, you know, have an adequate notice for room reservations? I'm doing the room reservations right now. Okay. <laughs> do you have a list? I, I do. I've got a left right in front of me. Too easy. Is there any other business that anyone would like to bring up? I would like, if possible, to meet in person on the first one. Yep. Um, and if you're good with that, and then we can, uh, you know, we can decide on the, the winter ones. Yeah. Um, I will likely not be able to attend in person on the first one. <laughs> 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 Steve, you can be chaired by your permission. That sounds good. <laughs> sort of wouldn't want yes, you to be, be here, here, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, Leo, where are your priorities, huh? At home. <laughs> Um, any other business that anyone wants to bring up if I've missed anything? Was anybody able to log on to the meeting on Tuesday? I unfortunately wasn't because some stuff came up for work, but the MBTA focus for the Eastern Historic Commission that was like looking at preservation and related to the MBTA requirements. Yeah, not... Leah, I was, on, I was on that call. Um, it probably raises the question of having somebody um, sort of come in and explain it to us. <laughs> um, it's section 3A, um, it's about um, being an MBA t uh, MBTA community. It mainly deals with what they call middle housing, multifamily housing um, with single family at one extreme, large apartment houses on the other extreme. It's that center that they're looking at with duplexes, triplexes, uh, garden apartments, um, actually that um, what seems to be that proposal for the um, Hillcrest uh, property uh, seems to fall into this too. Um, and also because we have so many stations, uh, we need to have more uh, housing available for, um, for workers. Um, there were some interesting comments, particularly about the um, uh, from the head of the historical commission from Ipswich, um, who was very they're very involved with the planning board. So I think we need to really court that relationship um, much more than we have in the past. Um, she also pointed out uh, an interesting um, perspective that from the historical perspective in trying to build the relationship between housing and history. You know, we have, um, um, Gloria, correct me if I'm wrong, a section of Needham Heights where um, there was a lot of worker houses that um, 
uh, were um, part of that uh, that part of Needham. Um, and this is all part of uh, very much a continuation of that emphasis on on historical housing uh, for workers and, and the workforce. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly um, how this initiative impacts uh, Laura, what you were talking about earlier with keeping the housing stock um, available and affordable, um, because this this is this middle housing group that they're talking about. So it's it's multiple family housing, not just single family housing. So um, I, I would suggest, and maybe it's something I can pursue, is to have somebody who might be able to be more familiar with it than I am. Uh, to explain it and how it might impact the historical uh, commission and historical houses in the town. Yeah. Was this the MHC sponsored meeting? Uh, yes, they that? participated in it. Um, I, 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 yeah, I think they sponsored it. Yeah, the Eastern Mass. Yeah. Starting. I hope to be able to listen to the recording. Um, Jeff had mentioned that it should be available, but thank you for the update, John. I was curious how that. <coughs> yeah. One other point that, um, that they made is that the these communities or this housing does not supersede historic districts. So if we end up um, creating additional local historic districts as a result of our effort that starts in June. Um, it really can't, those can't be impacted by this um, Section 3A compliance. It's almost like we have to identify any anything on the inventory that's near within a certain amount of distance, right, from these stations that we... No, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think that's necessary. I don't know if we have anything on the inventory that is multifamily housing. Yeah. And Gloria, I'm not sure you're that familiar with the or intimately yeah, involved in the inventory to know that. Yeah, I don't think we do. Um, but yeah, I think it would be good to have somebody if you can, you know, if there's somebody who wants to go to the ins and outs of this with us. Um, you know, especially with reference to any people planning for the LHDs. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure where Needham fits on this, but there are different um, deadline dates. I, I it, because we're a commuter rail community, I thought our the deadline for Needham is December 2024, but um, I don't know that for sure. So it might be helpful to have somebody just give us an overview. Well, I'm wondering if the planning board or Natasha can also help with that because um, that's obviously something they had to consider as well. Sure. Yeah. So maybe we could kill two birds with one stone. That's horrible saying. <laughs> okay. Well, that's great. I'm glad you guys did that. So, Laura, for, for an action item, you're going to reach out to her about the yeah. uh, yep, housing. I'm gonna, yep, okay. I'm going to ask her if maybe, maybe if we could even have a meeting with her. Mm -hmm. um, from and then maybe she can. Is she on the planning board, Miles Natasha? Or? Natasha Stata, yes. And then maybe she can share it with them, and maybe that would be a way to start, as opposed to us just asking for a meeting with the planning board. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it would be necessary to meet with the whole planning board. I think just an individual would be fine. Plus, I think we have somebody on the planning board who is part of the local historic district study group, so um, we'll be right. making. At least some contacts with them there. But like in terms of the bylaw, if we want to make any changes there, that would I feel like is that the planning board or the zoning board, Miles? How would if we really want to push this forward and get something on a warrant? Select board. We've always dealt with select, but wouldn't we have to include one of those boards? And so I won't pretend to be smart enough on the process relative to if this is a zoning change or a general bylaw change, yeah. Yeah. I think this is an interesting discussion to have with maybe starting with Natasha on the planning board okay. as you plan to. And if okay. she realizes this may be more appropriate for a general bylaw, then that would be 
under the realm of the select board. However, given the, I think it's important for both bodies to be aware that this is okay. something the historical commission would like to do though. It can't hurt to keep more people in the loop as to what you're looking for. So there's a few things we can talk to Natasha about, it sounds like, if she, right? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, anything else anyone on anyone's mind? Well, it's been a distinct pleasure serving as your chairperson. I'm happy to hand it over to very confident people who will do a much better job than I did. And uh, thank I, you for your service, Laura. Thank you for your of service. Course, of course, I have um, I have a bigger role in the CPC this year, so this is actually really good timing because there's going to be a lot with that. Um, so, um, should we make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. No. Aye. 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 Thank you, guys. Good to see Thank you. you. Great. Happy summer, everybody. Yeah, enjoy. Me too. Bye bye. Good luck, Leah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be thinking of you. Yeah. Keep us posted. <laughs>